so in preparing this conversation yesterday morning, I was thinking about the word focus. And when you're focused on what you're working on, when you're focused on what you're working on, are you more effective or less effective? More. More effective, OK? If you had five activities to do today, and you focused on them, and you did them with complete consistency, complete focus, complete dedication, would those five activities get done at a higher level or at a lower level? Higher, higher level, right? And yet, sometimes it's hard for us to focus, isn't it? Yes. In fact, right now, a third of you are thinking about something completely different. Yeah. Like, well, that's a cool time, you know? <laughs> or, geez, you could use a haircut. Or, when is he going to change that sign? <laughs> or whatever it is that goes, because that's human nature. It's what we do. When you were calling earlier today, and you came across a number, or you came across a name, and the name reminded you of something or someone, where did your focus go? It went down that rabbit hole to the thought of that person. Oh, I remember that person. I grew up with that person, or that, that thing happened to us. We lose our focus. So I wrote down here, what we have to do every single day is we have to work on eliminating distractions. And we have to work on staying focused during money-making activities. During money-making activities. Money-making activities, write these down. Role play. Money-making activities. Write your scripts out, videotape yourself, and your listing, uh, your listing presentation daily. Money-making activities. How about a 5 five, ten? When you're out focusing on what you're doing. Money-making activities. How about lead follow-up? Money-making activities. Those are the activities that we need to be doing on a daily, weekly basis. Why don't we focus on those things? What happens to us? Help me out here. Distractions. Well, what kind of distractions? Life distractions, like kids. Okay, okay, good. So we all have kids. Good. Well, not all of us. Some of you shouldn't have any. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself here. Although, as a grandparent, I think that's a good thing. Okay. Uh, what else? What other distractions get in the way? What else gets in the way? The holidays and shopping. Okay, good. All right. Sorry. You ate too much for Thanksgiving and you don't feel so confident to go out there. Okay. Another good reason why you should be on the phone. <laughs> okay. Or another good. I'm going to put that down. Number seven oh nine. Door knocking helps with weight loss. <laughs> Okay, good. All right, what else? What? Fatigue. What? Fatigue. What, what do you mean? Like, you know, like door knocking, like probably you hit door four, you hit four doors, you're like, yeah, yeah. Door four, door four, we're tired, or door four? Well, it's all 40, I'm doing it. You're such a, you know, you're, you're such an athlete. What? I can't even imagine door, hey, you're going to go to four, on my part. Uh, door 400 for you, Douglas. Okay. So I wrote down here, we don't do these things and we don't work on getting rid of the distractions because we don't see the value. We don't see the value. Or you don't think I'm giving you good advice. Think about it. What else could it be? You don't see the value, 
in what you should be working on, or you don't think we're giving good advice. Or there's another one. You're lazy. I would suspect none of you would consider yourself lazy, would you? Hello? No. OK. But if you're not doing the activities and you're allowing the distractions, it's either you don't consider the advice we're giving worth it, or you don't see the value in doing the activity. I was asked a question today. Um, by some guys in the East Coast. They said, why don't people in your company do what you've lined them out to do? Do you tell them what they're supposed to do before they join the company? Is there anyone here that didn't know what they were supposed to do before they joined? Hello? No. No one. So everybody got the message, all right? <laughs> and yet. Does everyone do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it? No. No. I, I'm not doing this to make you feel bad. I'm just making you aware. This is just an awareness thing. It's a simple awareness. And what happens is this is the easiest, hardest job on the planet. What do I mean? It's hard to do what you're supposed to do every single day if you don't have someone or something that you're either pushing you along or that the goal or the reason is so overwhelming, so exciting, so inspiring that it throws you out of bed in the morning. Or actually a combination. Does this make sense? Yeah. <laughs> so I wrote down here, we have to create money-making environments. We have to work on creating money-making environments. Is today a money-making environment? Yes. yes. Pretty exciting. There's probably 80 or 90 of you in this room right now that are focused on calling and working. Working expires. By the way, in the last three weeks, there were more properties that expired than any three-week period that I could see all year. Interesting. More properties expired in the last three weeks, and I suspect because the number will show for because uh, today's the first, so it doesn't till next Monday. We're not going to see the spike. There's going to be this week over 2,000 properties that will have expired. 2,000 properties. Okay, I think that's fabulous. It's a great opportunity. You know, and it's an even better opportunity. Why? Because you have little or no competition on the streets right now. And it's my job to point that out to you and then beat you with it every week so that you at some point finally get it and go out and do the extra door knocking, the extra phone cast calling, the extra things that need to be done, working on the scripts and dialogues on the expires. Those are my jobs. So I wrote down here, create money-making environments. So one of them is hang around like-minded people. Write down, hang around like-minded people. Number two, clear your work area. Clean your work area up when you go home at night. Clean your work area up when you go home at night. Now, sometimes that's very difficult. I, I find that very difficult to do personally. So I don't know if you notice this, but I go work at other people's spots. <laughs> did, did you ever wonder why? <clears throat> You'll notice, I go, it, it, I'll just go so, take my laptop, and I got like this extra battery on it, so it goes, so I don't have to worry about the cable. And the, the Wi-Fi works pretty much all over the office. And I'll put myself in different situations and different places when I need to focus. Why? Do you ever, know, do you ever see me roaming and like sitting in some place? You don't see it? 
Because when I sit at your desk, I don't care how dirty your desk is, there's nothing there that triggers me. You get it? There's nothing there that triggers me. Okay, that might trigger you, but it doesn't trigger me. A property address, a name of a person, a client, a, some situation that I need to follow up on isn't on that desk. So I go to that desk to sit down to focus and get the work done. I recommend you do that. We actually have 18 phone blitzes between now and the rest of the year. 18 of them. If you can't focus here, go to one of our other offices. Work from one of the other phone blitzes. There's 18 of them. There's four door blitzes for the rest of this year. We're going to keep you as focused as we can trying to work on getting one more listing and one more sale. Now, my goal is to motivate you to do that. But if I have to shame you into it, I'm not above that. <laughs> I'll do whatever I need to do to help you get one more opportunity so that you can get one more commission check. Now, would, would you say that's my job, yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes or no? Yes. Okay, because the way you were saying it is like, I, you know, I could go do something else. So I wrote down here, your objective should be to maintain your focus as often as you can throughout the day. A simple technique to help maintain the focus is set aside a time at the end of the day, just before you go to sleep, to acknowledge your success. Because sometimes we don't think we had a successful day. Sometimes we work on beating ourselves up. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. So what I want to do is I call this the most important 30 minutes of the day. And this is when you take and judge the day. You judge your day, okay? How did I do? We want to review your goals, and we want to work on mentally preparing yourself for next day's wins. The reason you want to do this in the evening and before you go to sleep is there's been studies done that if you tend to watch television, and what do we usually find on television at 10 or 11 o'clock at night? News. news. And what do we generally find on the news? news? Somebody killed somebody, or somebody robbed somebody, right? You generally don't see Anthony Robbins doing a little 10 minute seminar. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, if you want Anthony Robbins, you get him at 3 or 4 in the morning when people can't sleep. All right? But you, at 9, 10 o'clock at night, so you're getting poured into your head all this negativism and all this stuff that's just making you a little bit crazier than you need to be. So if you watch the news, it's violence and misery. And the, if you work on this 30-minute daily ritual, this is going to stop, the, and you do that, it's going to stop you from reaching your potential and what you possibly can do. So what I want you to do is, how can you mentally prepare yourself for tomorrow? So I wrote down here, ask yourself these questions. Where could I have been more effective today? Th the last 30 minutes of the evening before you go to sleep. Turn off all the televisions, turn off. Don't listen to talk radio to fall asleep, OK? Don't do that. Just turn the radio off, put on some soft music. But before you do that, ask yourself this question. Where could I have been more effective today? Where could I have been a better agent, mom, teacher, dad, brother, sister, son, or daughter today? Where could I have done better for my family or fellow man? And what steps do I need to take tomorrow to be better in these areas? What steps do I need to take to be better in these areas? 
I want you to focus on the events that took place during the day. And think of the activities that you were supposed to do. Focus on the activities you were supposed to do. Then ask yourself these questions after you ask the other ones. How can I do them better tomorrow? If you're prospecting, and all of you, or a lot of you were today, did you run into an objection or a situation or a question that you didn't know exactly how to handle? Ask yourself the question tonight. Write it down. Work on getting better with that tomorrow. So I wrote down here, how can I do them better tomorrow? Number two, what can I do tomorrow to improve in these areas? What can I do tomorrow to improve in these areas? And number three, who can I talk to tomorrow that needs to buy or sell a home tomorrow? When I was actively listing and selling houses, and I did that for about 25 years, every single day I would wake up. Before I got out of bed, I asked myself the question, who do I need to talk to today to list and sell a house? And I would just lay there and wait for something to come to me. Sometimes it worked, and sometimes it didn't. It didn't stop me from prospecting for the day, or door knocking for the day, or phone canvassing for the day, or going out and previewing property for the day. But a lot of times that one lead that stuck in the back of your head, or that situation that came up, kind of drops down in and pops up and says, wow, Johnny. Johnny said his aunt was interested in a house. I got to find Johnny. You get what I'm talking about? Ask that question before you jump out of bed in the morning. I wrote down, by creating a routine like this on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you're allowing your mind to create a tunnel to help keep your eye on the prize. See, I wrote down here, we can still list and sell something before the end of the year. And if you'll notice, I got rid of the countdown because I was thinking the countdown might be working negatively, not positively for you. What I want you to think of is I want you to think of there's still time today. You can open up your cell phone right now and you can start calling in your cell phone and you will find you call long enough deep enough and ask enough of the qualifying questions, you will find somebody who wants to buy or sell a house now or in the very near future. They're right there. They're in your cell phone. You're carrying it with you. The money is there. The question you have to ask yourself, is what activities do I need to connect to today? Scripts, dialogues, 5510, I have to preview more property, I have to call more people. You know, Cindy said, there might be an issue with the cell phone numbers. OK. And some of you, I was watching your faces go, oh, just another problem and reason I shouldn't be calling. OK? See, I looked at it this way. I'm still convinced you should be at the doors. You are not going to get me off of that right now. Talked to people on Friday night that were in the real estate business on the west side of town. And we were talking about getting a hold of clients. They have, most people they talk to are all on cell phones. Almost no one they know of has a landline. I would suspect most of you don't know people that have landlines. And yet, you're still calling landlines. 
when are you going to get this? And now we're getting some pushback on the cell phones. Great. Do you know how many of your competitors, when they hear that, I'm going to publish that, okay? Your competitors, oh, you, well, I know I want the competitors to know because then they won't call. Because there's an, see, there's another reason I shouldn't call, okay? There's one more reason. I look at it, see, your competitors see it as one more reason why they shouldn't call, and I look at it as one more reason why you should door knock. <laughs> It's all in how you look at stuff, okay? It's not what happens to you that matters. It's how you react to it. Let's react in a positive way. Could you imagine the way we're set up in our company is you blit, phone blitz one day a week. That's what you should be doing. Now, some of you do it two or three or four days, okay. But what you should be doing is phone blitzing one day, and you should be door knocking a minimum of 100 doors all the other days. If you went and door knocked 100 doors the rest of the other days, okay, that's 10 around the expires and 10 around the previews. You thought you were going to catch me, huh? <laughs> okay, 10 around 5 and 10 around 5 is 50 and 50, 50 and 50 is 100, 30 percent are home, 30 contacts. And then make 10 or 15 follow-up calls on past client and sphere, you'll get to 40 contacts a day. If you did that for the balance of the year, that would mean that you'd make 800 contacts for the balance of the year. 40 contacts a day, 20 work days. You guys with me? What's four times two? Eight. 800 contacts between now and the end of the year. Let me ask you guys a really simple question. If you talk to 800 people, between now and the end, end of the year, do you think you'd find some people that would want to buy or sell a house this year? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. That's all we're talking about here. And for those of you that are really aggressive, hit 45 a day. Wouldn't that be great? I don't have anybody aggressive, okay. <laughs> So I wrote down here, we need to take action now. We need to take action on those activities now. We need to do the five, five, tens now. We need to call our past client and sphere now. And by doing that between now and the end of the year, we're going to run through the finish line, take another listing, make another sale, get another, potentially get another escrow closed, and have an absolutely amazing first quarter. Let's go do it. Thank you very much.